Hello everyone and welcome to season two of our Budget Builds monthly series. For those joining us for the first time today, thank you so much for watching. Everyone else, welcome back. Let's see what we have to start off the new season. Before we get into it, I want to give a quick insight as to what we do for this series. We take your budget and answers from a request form. In the video description, there is a link to a Google form. It slowly gets updated every so often. With this information, we try to build the best computer we can to fit your means. Unless there are budget constraints, we spec out systems on AMD and Intel, both using their DDR4 and DDR5 Gen platforms. Once the build lists are complete, we compare each build using online benchmarks and list out the pros and cons between the top builds from the benchmarks. Using those, then we can determine what build is the best for your use case. But we can't do any of that without your input. Speaking of the Google form, let's see how you fill it out. Just a reminder, we do not collect any personal information, such as email addresses. Here we have your budget. Prices are in USD. Then we have our type of system, if you want a gaming, working, or a combination of the two. Form factor preferences, this will determine what cases we use. If you have a CPU or GPU preference. Areas of focus, if you want to focus on CPU, cooling, motherboard, memory, storage, graphics card, case, or power supply. If you already purchased or own system components, just put them in this text box right here. This will actually help us build your upgrade or brand new system. Any peripherals you want, if you want a mouse, keyboard, a monitor, headset, or anything custom down below if you're looking for certain preferences. And then if you do or do not want RGB or any other request, you can put down here. Quick disclaimer, prices will vary if any sales are going on or stock changes at the time of recording. Because of this, we tried to get the budget builds as close or slightly over the stated budget. Unless asked, we are not including taxes, shipping costs, OS keys, or peripherals in the final cost from the budget. All right, with that all out of the way, Let's see what our response is for this month. Unfortunately, just like the start of season one, we don't have any responses on our Google form. Since this is the case, we're going to take the comment from our GL502VT review video asking the following. User states, is it worth swapping out the hard drive for an SSD or is it getting to the point where you need to buy a new computer? This is going to give us a budget of, let's say, 600 to 1200 USD. And the only reason we're doing such a vast gap in price is if you want to upgrade the system, that's going to be for, let's say, under 600 bucks. But if you are going to want to purchase a new computer, this is going to be for 800 to 1200 USD. Now, we're going to only stick with laptops, even though the user said to upgrade to a new computer. This will make it simpler in the upgrade process, but it's just another take on it. So we know our Asus laptop can take one stick of DDR4 RAM and has a M.2 and I'm SATA put drive two slot. Builds, one using the minimum of 400 USD and one using the maximum of 800 USD for these upgrades. If you're spending more than $200 for laptop upgrades and the laptop is older than four to five years old, maybe it's time to look for a new one. Now we're only gonna focus on upgrades and not external upgrades. You can go for an external graphics card such as a Thunderbolt 2 eGPU. Unfortunately, for the price of the eGPU, you're better off building an entire new system or just upgrading to a better laptop. And here we have our $400 USD upgrade. Since our ASUS laptop only has one slot of RAM to upgrade, we went with the Kingston HyperX Impact. It's a 16 gig stick of DDR4 2666 Sodium CL15 RAM. For storage, we went with the 4 terabyte 2.5 inch SSD from Samsung. It's an 870 QVO. And for our M.2 upgrade, went with the Crucial P3 Plus. It's a one terabyte PCIe 4.0 by 4 NVMe SSD sitting right around 18 bucks under budget. Now, if we go for the full $800 USD upgrade, went with the Kingston Fury Impact, 32 gig stick of DDR4 3200 CL20. For storage, went with the 870 QVO from Samsung. This is an eight terabyte of that four terabyte version. And then for our M.2, went with the MSI Spadium. It's a two terabyte PCI 4.0x4 NVMe SSD sitting right around $25 under budget. Now we can actually take this 32 gig stick from our $800 USD upgrade and put it on our $400 USD upgrade and actually we would be perfectly fine because we're still sitting under budget for that. And then if we decide to overhaul an entire new system, for $800, we were able to find a 15.6 inch, 144 Hertz, full HD IPS screen 
It has an i7 12650H, 512 gigabytes SSD, 8 gigabytes of DDR5 4800. It has two RAM slots. Comes with a RTX 4060 with eight gigabytes of video RAM. It also has some other stuff like a 720p front-facing camera, built-in microphone, backlit keyboard. Of course, it weighs almost five pounds. That's about it. So it's currently on sale for 769. Retail is. 1099. Now if we move up a little bit, we have the Zephyrus G16. It's a 16 inch full HD, 165 hertz, 300 nits brightness. Supposedly you get 10 hours of battery life. It has a PCIe 4.0, 512 gigabyte SSD. Comes with an i7 13620H, 10 cores, 16 threads, and one stick of DDR4 3200 mega transfers per second with the RTX 4060. Currently, it's on sale for $999.99 with a retail price of $1449. And then we can end with the Zephyrus G14 for $1,000 more. It's a 14 inch, 165 hertz quad HD. Now it comes with a Ryzen 9 7940H with 8 cores, 16 threads. Has a 512 gigabyte PCIe 4.0 SSD. Has one memory slot with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 4800. And also has a bunch of miscellaneous things like. 720p camera and some other stuff back like keyboard currently it's on sale for 10.99.99 and its retail is 15.99.99 of course once this sale ends this laptop will make no sense as the 1200 dollars upgrade or our budget of eight to twelve hundred dollars and here we have all of our laptops listed out with all of their different specs we have the screen, the refresh rate, CPU, GPU, the RAM, storage, estimated battery life, and any miscellaneous things like pricing and weight. As we run each test, we're going to highlight each component on the laptops as first, second, and third according to this key. And by doing so, we'll see the best laptop to choose as well as the best second and third place choices. This is just to highlight any key components and seeing what we have to do with them. So let's get into testing and see what our choices are. First up, we're going to be testing our Ryzen 9 7940HS with our i7-13620H. And here we're comparing all of our CPUs from the 6700HQ from our GL502VT all the way to our Ryzen 9 7940HS from our Zephyrus G14. Now we can see that our Zephyrus G14 is a way better CPU than our GL502VT. So in first place, we have our Ryzen 9 7940HS. Second place, we have our i7-13620H. And in third place, we have our 12650H. So let's go back to our sheet and update that list. And according to these CPUs, the Ryzen 9 7940HS is our clear winner. And in second place, we have our i7-13620H and our i7-12650H in last. Moving on to our graphics cards. All of these have the RTX 4060 with the GTX 79. Moving on to graphics cards. All of these have an RTX 4060, but our ASUS GL502VT has a GTX 970M. We're gonna run a quick comparison test running those, as well as comparing the RTX 4060 eight gigabyte versus 16 gigabyte version. Here we're comparing our GTX 970 versus an RTX 4060. Now these are desktop cards and not mobile cards for laptops, but we're gonna get a brief comparison as to pretty much the FPS differences between the graphics cards. Now we're only focusing on the 970 versus the 4060. And overall, our 970 tries to keep up with our RTX 4060, but it has a tough time doing so. Go back to our sheet, update that list, and move on to comparing our 4060s with the difference in RAM. 
for our clear winners are RTX 4060 beats our GTX 970. All right, so I'm not able to find an RTX 4060 8 gigabyte versus 4060 16 gigabyte, but we have the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gig versus the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gig. Now these are technically desktop GPUs, but they will carry over to performance differences for the laptops as well. So we're gonna check out a few tests and run through it. The good ones. Most of these games are either running at 1440p or super overclocked to 4K. And we can see that in most games, the 8GB and the 16GB are actually close in a few FPS discrepancies. But if you're going to get one or the other, I would go for the 16GB 4060. Again, I know this is a 4060 Ti versus a 4060 Ti but the FPS will transfer over. And more or less, you'd be playing at 1080p rather than 1440p. Alrighty, let's go back to our sheet and update the form. But our 16 gigabytes actually are in first place versus our eight gigabytes in second and three gigabytes of RAM in third. Now for RAM, we can't really go ahead and test RAM, but comparing all of them, our 16 gigabyte of DDR5 4800 is in first with our eight gigabyte of DDR5 4800 in second place and then our 16 gigabyte and 12 gigabytes of DDR4 are in last place. And then to finish off our RAM are our RAM slots. Our MSI Cyborg has two with everything else having one. So they are in second and or third place. For our max RAM compatibility, again, the two slots of 32 gigabytes maxing out at 64 is our clear winner with 32 gigabytes in second and third place. For storage, we have half a terabyte SSD storage versus a one terabyte of hard drive storage. But our GL502VT actually beats everything because it has one SATA and one M.2, while everything else has one M.2 slot. Now the batteries, they're all pretty much the same thing, so we decided to skip on that. But the battery life Supposedly the ROG Zephyrus G14 and 16 can get around 10 hours. The Cyborg from MSI, we couldn't find a estimated hour of usage, while the Asus GL502VT can get roughly five to six hours of battery life. Weight is our next category with our Zephyrus G14 weighing right around 3.64 pounds, then our Cyborg riding at 4.37 pounds, and our Zephyrus G16 at 4.41 pounds. Of course, in last place is our GL502VT. And lastly, we're going to focus on price. Now, pricing was an interesting thing as mostly all of these are actually on sale at the moment. So we went ahead and reset our MSI Cyborg at that $800 range is in first with our Zephyrus G16 in second and our Zephyrus G14 in third. Of course, our GL502VT is currently above retail. But if we move on to its current retail pricing, currently... Our current price is $769 for our MSI Cyborg, $999.99 for a G16, and $1099.99 for a G14. Now, I know we said this is the best price, this is the second best price, and this is the third best price, but we actually need to compare the current price and its retail price. This is around 200 USD. I'm sorry. This is right around 300 USD and change. This is right around $400 USD and change. And this is sitting right around $500 USD and change. So this is $500 off, $400 off, and $300 off. So based on the current deals right now, I'd go for this one, this one, then this one. Next we need to look at used pricing. 
flipping around eBay, just looking at the sold listing prices. We can get a 502 VT for right around 299 to 799, depending on the listing. If we go for the MSI Cyborg, we can find ones for 699 to 999. So currently this is actually a good price brand new. If we move over to the Zephyrus G16, these sell for 899 to 1199. So $100 more, still pretty good difference. And then we can see the same thing with our Zephyrus G14, sitting right around 999 to 1199.99. So currently everything from here on, I would go for pretty much brand new as they're sitting right around that same pricing on eBay or other sellers. So now that we compared our Asus GL502 VT to our newer laptops, we're gonna finalize these things with our clear winners. We have the Zephyrus G14, Then in second place, we have our Zephyrus G16. In the last place, we have our MSI Cyborg. Now these orderings don't necessarily mean that you have to spend $10.99.99 for the G14. We just wanna show that if you spend a little bit more, you can get a better laptop depending on your budget. Again, this budget was $800 to $1,200 USD and these things actually fulfill that. So all in all, please don't forget to fill out that Google form. We can see that our clear winners are just to get a better laptop rather than sitting on some upgrades. Thank you so much for watching. Our recommended build winners can be found linked in my PC Part Picker account page. Link is in the description below. For anyone looking for the previous season's builds, we also have them updated on the page. We hopefully will be getting something out soon to handle all the builds. But until then, don't forget to fill out that Google form, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy these types of videos, and I'll see you all in the next one.